Quizalyze differentiation is, well, it's what differentiates our platform from all the others. On one hand, the student data collected from any given quiz provides a quick snapshot of student groupings that inform how you might want to follow up with different groups of students. That follow-up activity might be lecture, class discussion, screencast lesson for distance learning, group activity, game, project, or anything else you can think of. And you could have students retake the quiz multiple times to see how much they've improved, both individually and as a class. But if your follow-up resource is a video, a PDF worksheet, or an activity that can be accessed through a web link, you can have your activity set up ahead of time. Depending on how students score on their most recent quiz attempt, they can be automatically directed to various activities. Or you can assign the same resource to each group. The reasons you might do that are outlined in another video titled, How Effective Was My Lesson? If you are watching this in our YouTube channel, you can find it linked in the description. Now before I move forward, let's look at some activity settings we should turn off when using differentiation. These three options, when toggled on, will give students feedback about their quiz results, including correct answers. If we don't want students to simply memorize answers from earlier attempts, then we turn these options off. But of course, it is completely up to you what combination of feedback settings you want to utilize. Okay, now let's take a quick look at how this all works. First of all, if you see this sentence, that means other teachers have already assigned this quiz and attached follow-up activities that have resulted in student improvement. So when you click on it, you are brought to discover public resources that might be good follow-up activities, including any that are recommended. If you have your own resources in mind, you can go to your personal library and choose one you've used in the past or add a new resource. And yes, you can even choose another quiz as a follow-up activity. Some teachers really get creative with quizzes inside of quizzes. We call this quizception, quiz inception. Okay, moving on. You can preview your resource before choosing it and then go ahead and assign the follow-up. Now that we've chosen an activity for this group, we repeat the process for each, intending to stress the student as they progress. When you're done, you will be brought to your data dashboard, where you can see the activities you have assigned and monitor how many students have completed them. So now let's take a look at the student side of things. See how the quiz has been assigned? The student will make their first attempt and get a general idea of how they did. This student has work to do. They need to save and finish to move on. They should not click play again because it will bring them back to the game and not forward to the follow-up. Now they are presented their activity. This one was selected for students below 50%. They click on the activity and they are reminded that they must indicate to the teacher that they have completed the activity. In this case, they watch a video and they exit the video after they've watched it. To go back to the student activity dashboard, here they indicate they've finished and are ready to try the quiz again. The student improves and is presented with a more advanced follow-up activity, which they complete before attempting the quiz a third time. More improvement is shown, and the most advanced follow-up is presented. This one may be intended to stress students towards advanced proficiency and mastery. Unless you've set to limit the number of attempts, students can take the quiz as many times as they'd like or need. Although it looks like this student has achieved that through a fourth attempt. Tangibly seeing their improvement is an incredible motivator and positive reinforcer for students. Now let's go back to the teacher data dashboard. You can get a snapshot of how many and which students completed each follow-up. Who is not following directions and who is not even attempting to reach mastery. You can take a look at the efficacy of your follow-up activities in the improvement section. How much has a class improved overall? And how does improvement look for individual students? Over time, teachers can learn on a broader scale what resources are most effective and how to intervene with each student. 